Hey guys, wanted to do a quick Gilgo Beach serial killer update video because there was a little bit of news today that caused a stir. I don't know if you heard, but uh, convicted Manorville serial killer John Betroff was in court today. And that raised a little bit of a stir, had people speculating, why would this guy, who's been, by the way, convicted of two brutal murders, he's a leading suspect in a third, why would he be, he was convicted years ago, uh, he's been in prison for years, why would he be back in court today? And it led some people to speculate, oh, maybe he's going to confess to some of the Gilgo killings, whatever. Well, turns out he was in court today to try to get his two murder convictions thrown out of court. I guess he was hoping to walk out of court today a free man. So I don't think that happened. If, there's, <laughs> if that did, you'll definitely be hearing it all over the internet. But that is what his court date was about, just so that you guys have the information. There's very little info about it on Google or YouTube right now. Uh, but of course, the great reporter Mary Murphy from PIX11 uh, put out a related article last night that I'm going to read to you now. Suffolk County District Attorney Raymond Tierney ruled out a longtime theory that convicted Manorville murderer John Betroff could somehow be tied to the Long Island serial killer investigation. Quote, he has nothing to do with Lisk, end quote, Tierney said. Betroff was convicted of killing Rita Tangredi Beinlich and Colleen McNamee, whom he had hired as sex workers in late 1993 and early 1994. Their bodies were found in the woods of eastern Suffolk County, posed in a sexual position and missing their left shoes. Betroff was tied to a third murdered woman, Sandra Costilla, but was never charged in the case. After Betroff received 50 years to life in prison in 2017, Assistant Dr District Attorney Robert Biancavilla said outside court that some of the unsolved Gilgo murders, quote, may be attributable to the handiwork of Mr. Betroff, end quote. This led to speculation that Betroff, a married father of two, could be involved in the serial killer case, which involved the discovery of 10 sets of remains in the brush off Ocean Parkway in 2010 and 2011. Some of the victims had been dismembered. Now, two of the dismembered victims at Gilgo Beach, Valerie Mack and Jessica Taylor, were initially discovered in Manorville, where Betroff lived. Mack was found in 2000, and Taylor was found in 2003. Jessica Taylor's killer had tried to gouge a distinctive tattoo from her body that said Remy's Angel. Both Mack and Taylor had their heads and hands removed from their bodies and were tied up. These remains were found along Ocean Parkway in 2011 during the Gilgo serial killer investigation. Today marked the 13th anniversary of the first discovery on Ocean Parkway. The remains of Melissa Bartholomew, a missing woman from the Bronx who advertised services on Craigslist, were found December 11, 2010. Two days later, the remains of Megan Waterman, Maureen Brainerd Barnes, and Amber Costello were found cl close by in the brush. Tierney said he has DNA, cell phone records, and extensive internet searches that link Herman directly to the murders. Tierney said recently his office and the Gilgo Beach Homicide Task Force have moved on to work on the other unsolved murder cases on Ocean Parkway. The victims include a toddler and a man dressed in woman's clothing. So guys, let's talk about some of the connections between Betroff's Manorville murders and the Gilgo Beach murders. For many years, especially before Herman's arrest, a lot of people assumed Betroff was the Gilgo Beach serial killer. Here's some reasons why. Valerie Mack and Jessica Taylor's bodies were both at Gilgo Beach and Manorville, where Betroff's victims were. They're about 47 miles apart, the two towns. Betroff dismembered his victims 
and Jessica and Valerie were also dismembered, and there's other victims on Gilgo Beach like Peaches and Karen Vergata who were also dismembered. All known victims in both cases were sex workers. And here's an interesting connection. One of Betral's victims, Rita Tangredi, was best friends with Gilgo Beach victim Melissa Bartholomew. Now, I thought I had read years ago that Melissa Bartholomew was best friends with Rita Tangredi's daughter because the timeline doesn't really match to me uh, as far as their ages, Melissa and Rita, but all the outlets are reporting Rita Tangredi, a uh, John Betrolf victim, and Melissa Bartholomew, a alleged Rex Herman victim, were best friends. Either way, it's a clear connection between the two women. So that alone, to me, made Betrolf uh, a suspect back in the day. This is years before uh, Herman's arrest, especially since we knew that the killer had called Melissa Bartholomew's sister using Melissa's cell phone, tormenting her, and he knew Melissa's sister's name, he knew what Melissa's sister looked like, so I always felt like, wow, you know, Betrolf seems like a likely suspect. Another interesting connection, one of the 200 internet searches that police revealed Herman made was of John Betrolf, and of course Herman's going to be fascinated with that, a guy like that. He is going to be fascinated with other serial killers as his web searches show. Keep in mind too though that these web searches, these are just the recent ones, okay? They have decades and decades of Herman's web activity and I cannot wait to see the full, at least the interesting, uh, full list of searches that Herman made emails that Herman sent and received. You know, who is Herman interacting with, if anybody, by email, I'm sure he was. One of the people who commented on my videos said Herman likely searched for killings that he committed. So like, did he search for the Route 29 stalker case? Um, or other murders we have never even associated with him? And that person made a very good point that uh, seeing his decades of searches may indicate a lot. And I think D.A. Tierney alluded to that in his statement as uh, extensive web searches being part of the evidence that ties him to these murders. Another connection now that Herman's been arrested and we can compare suspects is these were kind of two regular professional guys. Herman, an architect and family man. Betrov, a carpenter and family man. And although people talked about how Rex was a jerk, um, Betrolf had this amazing reputation in his town. You should hear the glowing, uh, uh, you know, stories about him. He's the classic serial killer where the neighbors are like, oh my God, he was the nicest guy. This can't be true. Story after story about how he would help people in the town, do this, that, and the other. I think a few witnesses even referred to him as like, the unofficial town mayor, like not literally a politician, but he was just so well liked and so friendly to people that they referred to him as like the mayor of the town. Another connection being that both of uh, Betrolf's victims um, were uh, dismembered, but also I think originally were killed by strangulation. And of course, we know the Gilgo Four were killed by strangulation. If you guys know of any other connections, whether it's facts or just your own theories on the connections between these two cases, feel free to uh, say so in the comments. Here's a little bit of background on Betrolf and his victims. Betrolf was a 57-year-old former carpenter, similar to Herman. He was convicted six years ago of two counts of second-degree murder in the killings of Rita Tangredi, 31 years old, of East Pachog. I know I'm probably uh, mispronouncing that name, guys. You can tell me in the comments the right way to say it. And Colleen McNamee, 20 years old, of Holbrook. Betrolf is serving a 50-year-to-life prison sentence upstate at Clinton Correctional Facility. Rita Tangredi's body was found in 1993 in a wooded area off of Esplanade Drive in East Pachog. 
and Colleen McNamee's body was found the following year in 1994 in a wooded area south of the Long Island Expressway in Shirley. Both victims were posed sexually and both victims were mutilated. Now to tell you a little bit about the third victim that uh, Betroff was never charged with, but they believe that he also killed her. Her name is Sandra Costilla. Uh, on November 21st, 1993, two hunters discovered Sandra Costilla's body at this location in North Sea, Southampton. The 28-year-old had been strangled to death and left partially clothed in the residential woods near Fish Cove. At the time, the police stated that the victim, quote, might have been raped. Costilla's remains were lying in the woods for several days before they were discovered. The authorities were able to identify them using her fingerprints. In 1992, she was arrested for jumping over a subway turnstile. Wow, what a crime. As a result, the police had a record of her fingerprints on file. Costilla's last known address was on Gates Avenue in Ridgewood, Queens. However, it is believed that she wasn't living there at the time of her death. Police said that she was a drifter who sometimes used the surname Cutello. Costilla's murder is believed to be linked to the killings of two sex workers called Rita Tangredi and Colleen McNamee. Although she had no arrest for prostitution, the police stated that she lived a lifestyle that was substantially similar. And as always, my heart and support goes out to the victims and their families. Uh, you know, sometimes I read through the details of these cases like, you know, I'm just sort of reading off a shopping list or something, but um, this stuff is very painful and personal to the families, including the family of Jessica Taylor, including the family of Valerie Mack, Melissa Bartholomew, all of the victims. I actually wanted to share, I normally don't share uh, DMs that someone would send me. I don't want to betray their trust, but uh, a family member of Jessica Taylor's DM me on Twitter a couple months ago. Uh, the reason I, I won't share the whole conversation, but the reason I wanted to share that is because it really meant a lot to me um, that I could have a positive effect on the victims' families um, and that I could support them in any way that they could and that she felt comfortable reaching out to me uh, really, really meant a lot to me. And again, uh, I fully support the victims and their families. So also keep in mind, guys, both Manorville and the Gilgo Beach area are both in Suffolk County. So in 2017, when Betroff was convicted, guess who was district attorney? Thomas Spota. And he gave a statement after the verdict came in. Quote, the families of these women have been through an agonizing, long wait for justice. And during the trial... They had to endure graphic testimony about the death of their loved ones. We hope the verdict today gives them some semblance of peace, end quote, uh, Spoda said. And although I completely agree with that statement, and that's a very professional, kind statement, given that Tom Spoda, all the damage he did in the Gilgo Beach case, and how he and Police Chief James Burke, the two of them were very responsible for the Gilgo Beach case being downplayed for years, uh, being not investigated properly for years, kicking the FBI off of the case, committing uh, corruption in both the Gilgo case and another case that both of them went to jail for, did tremendous damage to the Gilgo Beach case and they made the families of the victims in the Gilgo case suffer so I just find it uh, a little disingenuous that uh, Spoda made such an eloquent, kind statement. And by the way, shortly after he made that statement, he went to prison. Burke had already pled guilty and gone to prison a few years before Spoda. Yeah, Burke and Spoda, way too busy covering up their own crimes, covering up their own uh, corruption. Burke too busy beating up suspects who found kitty porn in his uh, duffel bag, uh, but Burke wasn't too busy to be going to drug and sex parties uh, on Oak Beach, that's where 
uh, Shannon Gilbert went missing uh, in the house right next to disgraced pedophile priest Alan Placa. No, Burke wasn't too busy to be going to those parties. That's after he kicked the FBI off the case, after he downplayed the Gilgo murders, after he did everything he could to slow down the investigation and uh, downplay the victims, downplay John Ray, who accused him of corruption. He wasn't too busy to be doing all that. So, of course, Burke went to jail, then Spoda went to jail, and then, as many of you remember, just a few months ago, Burke got rearrested on a gay cruising area in Long Island. He got busted soliciting an undercover male police officer, uh, asking him if he could perform a sex act on that police officer. Of course, he didn't know it was a cop. So, Burke gets arrested this summer, 2023, for soliciting... The undercover male detective asking him if he can perform a sex act on him and he also gets busted with drug possession uh, and he says to the cops who arrested him do you know who I am like he was expecting them to just let him go because after all he's big important ex disgraced police chief James Burke you can't arrest me well they arrested him interestingly though they did drop the drug charges against him which I would imagine are the more serious charges. Uh, of course, he still had his buddy Steve Ballone, who hired him way back when. Steve Ballone was still county executive on his way out when those drug charges were dropped this summer. So guys, I want to play you some news footage from John Betroff's arraignment. We get to hear from the victims' families, which I always love to give them their say. It's so strange, though. I can't find any footage of his conviction but he was convicted he's currently in jail and again he went to court today again six years later to try to get these charges dismissed um, and then I want to talk a little bit after the videos too because I have some observations about Bitroff that I had when I first saw him walk into court six years ago New information tonight as we get our first good look at the accused cold case killer of Suffolk County. Our cameras were there when the suburban father of two faced a judge inside Riverhead Criminal Court, as well as the families of the two victims killed more than two decades ago. CBS 2's Jennifer McLogan reports. Accused serial killer John Bitroff of Manorville listened silently as two cold case murder indictments were unsealed against him. Prosecutors linking the suburban father's DNA to two women bludgeoned and strangled more than 20 years ago and say he could soon be charged with a third unsolved Suffolk case, also from the 1990s. Both victims were found in close proximity to where the defendant resided at the time. Both victims were found naked. Both victims were found posed in a particular manner. The bodies of 20-year-old Colleen McNamee and 31-year-old Rita Tangretti, both considered sex workers at the time, were found within three months of each other, naked and mutilated in wooded areas of East Patchog and Shirley. We just learned beaten so brutally their brains were ripped from their heads. It is shocking to me that we are here talking about something as horrendous as this. The families of McNamee and Tangretti left court to sob in the hallway. Dozens of friends and supporters stifled cries when prosecutors described semen belonging to the suspect along with wood chips connected to his carpentry work in the bodies of the victims, clues preserved for decades. This is like the best birthday present I could ever have. Investigators say linked now through the miracle of science, collecting cigarette butts flung from car windows by his brother and wife and digging through Bitrolf's garbage. He's kind, generous, the best neighbor you could have, always there for you. That's who he is standing next to me. I've heard nothing about a prior record. The indictment is proof of nothing. It's evidence of nothing. The seriousness and the brutality that was, uh, that was inflicted, I'm going to hold the defendant without bail. The district attorney says besides leaving the women in unique, similar poses, the killer took a vital clue from each of them that will remain a secret until trial. From Riverhead, Jennifer McLogan, CBS 2 News. Just nice to see justice uh, served. Anthony Tangretti could barely speak after hearing the wrenching details of his mother's murder when he was a little boy. She was strangled, her skull shattered. Nothing could be harder for uh, a little boy to lose his mom. And you thought 
they would never catch the killer. Yeah, gave up hope a long time ago. But now, a day he thought would never come. The trial of her accused killer, John Bitrolf, a Manorville carpenter, a married father of two, plucked from an ordinary life when his DNA matched two cold murder cases, 30-year-old Rita Tangretti and 20-year-old Colleen McNamee, both prostitutes killed in 1993. For three years, Bitrolf has maintained his innocence from jail, his family behind him. He's an excellent man. That's all I have to say. Trusting neighbors were stunned. Always helped everybody. It's just unbelievable. Nobody could believe it. He's like the mayor of this town. He knows everybody. He helps everybody out. But prosecutors say DNA in this case is witness to the truth. It happens. We, all, we don't know everything, uh, the dark side of people's lives. But again, we'll present our evidence and we'll leave it up. Uh, to the jury. Prosecutors told the jury the case is about science. Both women found naked, uniquely posed in the woods, bodies covered in wood chips, genetic material left on both victims. The case cracked after Bitrolf's brother was arrested in an unrelated crime, his DNA a partial match with the killer. Investigators would search the garbage of this Manorville house to find a match in John Bitrolf. The defense blasted police for losing evidence, pointing out DNA doesn't prove murder and others had motives. Jurors were offered not a hint of a motive why a man would commit murder twice then keep a dark secret for 20 years. Vitroff turned down a plea deal. The trial could take 10 weeks. In Riverhead, Long Island, Carolyn Gussoff, CBS 2 News. Now, despite obvious similarities, prosecutors have said there is no evidence linking Vitroff to the still unsolved Gilgo Beach killings. So it's 8 p.m. Eastern Time right now. I haven't seen any coverage of today's uh, hearing with John Betrolf, so I'm assuming it went routine. Uh, most of the media probably doesn't even know it happened. Um, but Mary Murphy was on it, and um, uh, Joe Giacalone, uh, who goes by True Crime with the Sarge, he was on it as well. Uh, so I'll assume it was no big bombshell that he tried to get the charges dismissed, and the judge probably told him to go screw himself and go back to jail. I remember the very first day he walked into court. Now remember at that time, Sherman hadn't been arrested yet. There was a lot of similarities between the Betroff cases and Gilgo, so we still weren't sure, could this be our guy? Uh, I mean, we're glad he got caught for these murders, but if he's uh, guilty for the 10 victims at Gilgo Beach, we want him for that too. So I was really looking at him closely. I was really sizing him up. And uh, I gotta say, you know, the minute he walked into court, I was like, guilty. Um, now, of course you can't judge somebody by the way they walk into court or their body language. But in my mind, if I was accused of two brutal murders that I didn't commit, I am not going to be walking in. This is right after he was arrested. And I am not going to be walking into court, oh, dum de dum de dum he just looks like he's out for a stroll on a Sunday morning, you know? Oh, hey, judge, how you doing? I mean, you know, as if he's there for like a traffic ticket or something. Even his lawyer looked at him like, shut your mouth. Um, but that just blew me away when I saw him. I look at things like demeanor. I look at things like body language. And his body language told me, oh, that's the guy. He's guilty. The cops did not just pick his name out of a hat and he knows it. I understand everyone deserves a trial and you know you can't convict somebody because of the way they walked into court. I'm just telling you what my very first reaction was when I saw him and so when he was convicted I was definitely not surprised. So anyways guys uh, this was supposed to be a super quick video just telling you about today's hearing um, but I just I couldn't breeze past this case. It's just way too relevant um, way too prominent of a case. I care about the victims way too much to not let them have their say in my video. Uh, you know, so I didn't want to make it just about today's hearing. And uh, I'm just very glad for Rita Tangredi's son, I believe his name was Anthony, uh, is Anthony. And I'm happy for all the families that they got some justice. I know it doesn't bring them closure. They will be heartbroken forever but I am very glad that they at least got some answers and I'm glad they got this sick, evil, cowardly, disgusting killer put in jail for the rest of his life. 
So guys, tell me what you think. Give whatever comments you want, questions, theories. Um, you know, this is a, a huge case that we haven't talked about on my channel yet. Again, a lot of people thought, especially before Herman's arrest, that he was the Gilgo Beach serial killer. So, uh, yeah. And once again, guys, thank you so much for the support on my channel. It's been amazing. And I got more videos coming soon. This was kind of an impromptu one because I just found out about his hearing today. Uh, but I got more videos coming soon. Thanks, everybody. Take care.